Good afternoon, everyone. It's a beautiful Saturday here in Paso Robles, and I am doing the closeout of Cleopatra this afternoon. So we have Monday open to get into market research, which is so critical for your engagements. So what we're going to do as follows is we're going to do a quick recap. Okay, the grades have been posted, and we're going to get into some high points in the case. All right, here's the dashboard. Stats, I love it. 87 of a mean and a median of 87.75. We have much tighter standard deviation and we had a high of 95.5. Yes, I do give A's and a low of 82. So definitely an improvement with the update versions in terms of doing section five. Newsmakers here on the right hand side. We have high score team six. Congratulations guys, big hand for you. You get the brags for the week. Honorable mention definitely are teams two and one with their scores. And the most improved is Team 3 with 7.25 points on the add-on. Remember, I've added in two bonus points for your work that you did for Purchase Driver Scorecard, as well as the um, revisit of Cleopatra and also in terms of the pricing model. The best story, naturally, is the price to beauty. I certainly hope you guys come in next Wednesday with even better stories. And the most notable presenters were James Donahue, Scott Parker, and Joseph Walker. How can we forget Joseph? So, recap. What improved? The decks. The content. All right? What made the difference? Section 5. Remember, this section is very, very critical in terms of you building a business case. If you did this section well up front, it would structure your case arguments beautifully. Point losers also were in the story and the, and the decks were not being locked down. There were spillovers. So take note when you take things off Google Drive to proof it again. Maybe even lock a PDF so I see what the final is. But remember, if you have something that is looking messy and you present it, it impacts in terms of how your audience perceives your work. Okay, presentation still needs some improvement. Make sure you nail the opening, as Solomon says, very critical, and don't read notes. Speak from the heart. Okay, content. Okay, support. I'm going to be data, data, data. Strategy. This was about push pull. Mitigations. Be specific on actions. Implementation. Make sure you have time and events and responsible. Okay, and this is going to be critical as you march down the next six weeks working with your clients. Make sure you have very clear wrap-ups. Putting together an implementation with a close makes it a confusing slide. Okay, section five, not answered. No backup detail. We saw in several of them some hedging and not using strategy tools, particularly the positioning statement. So here are some tips. We talked about the rubric, we talked about the story, we talked about data, we talked about practicing and not reading. Don't be defensive in the Q&A. Make yourself open to different points of view and show that you're co coachable. That helps in the boardroom. It helps in venture presentations. And make sure you always tie in relevant strategy. And a few storylines as we have here. And here I just brainstorm multiple storylines. And we're sort of in this quasi the journey uh, story today. As you see, we have a roadmap. We have the journey. I also use path to value. And I know like Team 7 sort of played with Lost in the Woods. And Team 1 played with Path to Beauty. But you're getting there. I only see you're going to get better as you do more presentations. So let's continue down the path. Okay, we've done the recap and off to the case. Cleopatra is going down the Nile in, in her barge to the Great Pyramids. Next time, I need to make sure I have the Nile and the barge. So what did colgate Palmolive do in Quebec? All right, what they did was they did the bottom. Okay, they didn't do the top. As we know in the top, if you want to be an effective marksman, you have to ready aim and then fire not fire okay and then aim so this is a construct that i was exposed to in business school when we did the case but basically what we found was a number of places where cleopatra in essence sokolbeck palmov missed the mark relative to the marketing concept process 
So what we have is you have to have a business mission, you have your SWOT analysis, which is really basically tying in your situational analysis, you have your goal objectives or your objectives that we talked about, and then strategy, and then ultimately your tactic in terms of formulating that and implementation. And if you look at it, some of the big issues is they didn't have an effective um, SWOT analysis or mission, okay? They did not have, you know, a, a proper segmentation relative to skin care and position properly relative to that, all right? They did not have, uh, they had a top-down forecast, okay? They didn't tie in revenue drivers, and they did a pull effort and ignored the channel. So they ignored the retail wholesale side, and they only promoted to consumers. And they, the pricing strategy was developed uh, without what we normally use, whether it's a chondroit, um, elasticity, or what we have done in the, in the past classes, the, the value model, our price benefit model. And then while they had a strong launch, they, they, they needed to make sure that they had sampling sweeps, but they had poor channel management. They didn't monitor things. So at the end, they did do a good post hoc. I think that if they could learn from their their mistakes and maybe shift a little bit, maybe they could be on the path to value. So in many ways, Colgate Palmer a little lost in the woods. I, I'm going to steal that from Team 7. Okay? Actually, I shared that with Team 7. And we know this guy, Steve Boyd, there's their vice president there, and he's got a little headache there. He has three options. Admit de defeat. Discontinue. So that is. It's called divest. Get rid of it. All right, continue strategy with Meyer. So tweak. So what you can do is you can tweak your strategy if you feel and get to four and a half percent market share by giving more time and support. Sometimes you have to think about, is that the best way? Or am I throwing bad money after bad money? Or do I alter the strategy or even the product itself? And I think we've talked about that a little bit in previous lecture. So they, they needed to do was aim. We talked about these key questions previously. Remember these. This is the key questions for a market opportunity assessment. So outside of this class, I would put to memory these questions because they will help you and they will help your clients to assess whether you should go into a market or not. So for instance, with Cal Closets, this is perfect to be able to bring in as you're developing your situational analysis and your plan around the four P's and your business model canvas. You have to ask key market questions. Okay, Tam Sam Sam, you got to think about the Kager. Is it a fast growing market, rapidly growing market? Is it not? Is it a flat growing market? Are we dealing with a bunch of piranhas going after very, very few worms? Or are we going to jump into a blue ocean, e.g., such as if we were, like with Cal Closets, going to go into a marketplace? But in essence, is we have to think about segmentation, as Porter talks about, to make sure we've segmented it properly. And in many ways, thinking about segmentation relative to the core categories, as we know, which would be utility, refresh, and skincare, do we create a new category as well, which was the beauty category, which we know Neutrogena did. So net segmentation is key and tying in the key archetype. So what we also need to think about is globalization versus multinational. What C. Um, Colgate Palmolive did was basically a globalization, cut and paste, okay? What they needed to do was either a promotion adaptation, which could have been done in Quebec, market research done in Quebec, or they could have done a dual application where they now have adapted the product. As we know, there were issues relative to package, but also particularly relative to perfume. So take home here. You don't cut and paste. I dealt with this when I worked in global marketing. It has a natural affinity for global marketers to go similar names, branding, campaigns across the world and neglect the needs of local marketplaces. So... Take a page out of the McDonald's playbook when you're in India, you don't serve beef, okay? So keep that in mind that you have to adjust to the marketplace needs. So in Quebec, for the Quebec wall, maybe for instance, we might not need so much perfume, okay?
So, anyway, back to Steve. So, tweak or change? This is where we're at. Strategy, product, or both. Okay? This is what most people chose. All right? This is what we did at Kelly. We did a little analysis. We had two-part intensive essays that were business-based essays. So, basically, we have multiple questions. We use Occam's razor, get to the point, give data, make sure you get the bottom line up front. That's what I look for in your essays coming back. That's what I graded relative to your art of client service. And when you do your reflection essay, that's what I will look for. That's because what that's what most executives look for. Give me the bottom line right up here in the front. Okay, smack me on the nose so I know what it is and I have interest. Give me data. Okay, and we give data relative to the three uh, segments and then we analyze we put some sort of basis for supporting our recommendation that is there notice we're talking segment here this is a good way on the bottom here to be able to navigate your slides so your audience follows where you go you also can put an icon up in the corner to be able to help that as well the next thing is we get to talk about the archetype which customers remember most people pivoted to just target customer such as team one did with um with Celine Dion, you could have used Alanis Morissette as well. She is also French Canadian. However, we forgot about Mr. Wiffle in terms of the retailer. Oops, we need to keep in mind the, both the, the archetype and their needs and what motivates them as well. So that is, I think, an opportunity and it was definitely touched on in the rubric in section five. We also need to build a brand, okay? But building a brand is not about colors. It's not about um, the packaging. Those are part of what you execute at the end of the day. But it is, starts with the customer and positioning and making sure you're speaking the language of the customer. You know, and if we're taking a high-end position such as with this as a beauty bar, remember, baby, give it to me because I'm worth it. That's an attitude that needs to be put forth if you are going to go and up against a high a higher higher level product okay it is um pampered pam from what we know um california closets we are positioning in our concept as team two had pointed out is beauty bar and maybe some of our messaging could be hello beautiful all right let's get to benefits and then you could use in your messaging, says it's Clio, okay? Clio is a little bit more avant-garde. It ties in maybe to the language in terms of French Canadians or liberate the beauty within, okay? Uh, so again, benefits-oriented versus features, which is very critical. And so one of the things that's very critical to making sure you can articulate your value proposition is a universal selling proposition we also call the position statement. So take note of this. This will be very important as you move forward. Like team one, you're going to be doing this with uh, Palo Alto Networks. So for target customer who has this problem, our product does that provides what, unlike the competition and our product solution has some type of secret sauce. Here's what we did at Kelly relative to positioning statement. We put it right there, up straight, so you knew what the positioning points were. And then what we did is tied in brand name, tagline, and supportive messages. I asked for a half a page. Here's how you can do it in a half a page. So we're into branding. And just continuing on with branding, we need to think about how it's message. Cleopatra, if you read this, this is feature-oriented. Many marketers fall into this. Many small businesses fall into this trap. This is not good marketing. Look at what Dove does. Dove talks and it's Unilever. Soft or smoother. So there's a benefit and a call to action. So when you're thinking about your products, please revisit the Bain Triangle, okay, which has a mix of benefits that move up in terms of from functional to emotional to life changing to social impact and they have more value at the end of the day because at the end of the day people buy benefits they buy things that mean something to them they don't necessarily buy features and if you overload features 
you will fatigue your customer. And remember, speak Quebecois. Speak the language of the customer. Don't get caught up in technical language. Okay, and as you can see here, what Colgate Palmolive should have done, and studies do point out that when you speak the language of the customer, you are authentic. Or if you go back to the lean brand, where Jeremiah Gardner brings out this, he points out that you need to make sure you're in sync with that customer and how you speak in your story that you're authentic. And so remember the example that we talked about with beta brand. This just emphasizes what is so important here. So the campaign that they had in France fell on its plate because they did not speak Quebecois. And remember the magic triangle. What is that? Come on, it's Solomon's Art of Client Service. Great work, relationship and trust. It works in advertising, but you know what? And in relationships with customers, well, guess what? Sales and marketing are very interlinked. And this is true with a product and brand is you have this relationship, as we know from Jeremiah Gardner, you're creating great work because of your promise. It is about great work, which keeps you in a trusting position because you deliver on that promise. Okay. And we know we always want to keep promises with our customers. This is the last one of the other areas I think is important is distribution. And several of you hit on this. Remember, this case is about push as well as pull. And what uh, Colgate did was they pulled. They didn't push properly. They didn't understand that customer. So we need to think about the flow of product going from uh, point to point from manufacturer, distributor to retail in terms of and the cash flow that comes back but the information flow, which is something that you actually could buy, uh, you could pay for, that now makes up for an off invoice discount. So one of the things I didn't see in the case that should have been presented was pull push or push pull. Colgate Palmolive predominantly did this, but they should have done this, working with their retailers to provide messaging to their retailers and ways for them to turn because it's about velocity and then um, to enhance product flow at the end of the day. And if you're moving product, guess what? You're moving that product. They want more because they're making money and they're not holding inventory. So push is about aligning these incentives. It's not about gross discount. And here's some tools for motivating distributors in terms of relationships and doing things that make it win-win. Okay, and then creating incentives, as we talked about paying for data, but also in terms of paying for shelf location, paying for end caps. These do a job having in-store coupons that are trackable so you know what is working or not. And in-store promotionals, promotions that you pay the store to do, so they're getting paid for this. But what we can do is track in terms of the impact of that promotion based on daily sales. You usually take the in-store promotion, they give you a coupon. You probably see this in Costco happen a lot or in Albertsons. Oh, ugly, but there's something familiar here. It's called the funnel, the double funnel. Yes, you could have brought it in. I know there were tactics, but why I want to bring this in here is very simple, is that you can overlay your tactics. So as you work with your clients, you can think about the front end. How do we move? that customer through the funnel very quickly, okay? They were good with awareness, okay, 73%. But what we could do is we could add Celine Dion or Alanis Morissette appearances. We could be in Quebec Beauty and Lifestyle magazines. I know Team 6 actually brought that in their appendices. You can go TV ads and targeted shows like the Mohawk Girls. Uh, you could do product placement in spas and that the Four Seasons Hotel, okay, or the Ritz Carlton, high-end places to just enhance the, the, the brand you can, and brand visibility with that target audience. You can do point of purchase incentives in your retailers and coupons, okay? But this is the area they fell short, was on conversion. They got the incentive, but they could not close the deal. And these are ways you can do. And as we saw in their materials, 
There was no CTA. Now, once you have customers and they had people, one of the things we look back in the day that they were not holding, they were not loyalists. So how do we keep loyalists? We build the story around beauty. We build a relationship. We can do user points. We can do the online beauty club, okay, or the, the, the girls club. You know, there was no duly defined mechanism for the brand to keep and develop active and passive loyalists. So social spots with beauty emphasis. Remember, what are we selling in Quebec? When the skin gets dry and you're looking at uh, a, a female who may be in their late 30s and the 40s, trying to maintain that beauty, because beauty is very important, okay, is it's not just about the bar. It's about everything. As I talked about, there's more to Epitin than a Poetin Alpha. I think there could be more to Cleopatra than just a beauty bar. Okay? And that's what keeps the relationship going. And then you have built up great brand. You can have brand extensions, such as a lotion we talked about. Okay? So that's something that can uh, give some oomph to the brand to grow the business and maybe even opportunities to have a referral program as well. So here are some ways strategically, you could tie back your tactics that are there. And now I know with risk and mitigations, and one of the things that caused a little angst was that I got mitigations that were very oblique. They were like, huh? So be specific. Think about plan B. What am I going to do? Do I have the fire extinguisher? Do I have earthquake insurance? What are the things? So here's some examples of if you, if you have this issue here, okay? then you have specific mitigation actions to reduce your risk, okay? And I'm just going to close it out. The last thing is every good marketer measures, okay? So when you do your program, what you're going to do is tie in key performance indicators, KPIs, Okay, and we need to make sure they're measured. So when we talked about in the funnel and what I showed previously is you need to think about efficiency because conversion was the issue. So how can we be more efficient that if we get 73 people into the funnel that we can convert a higher percentage rather than four or five, maybe you can get 10 or 20. Okay, and then when you're doing a more efficient funnel, what you're doing is is that you are reducing your cost to activate a customer. The other thing is you're looking at with a customer with your keep programs is to make sure that it's not a one-time purchase, but that we have a lifetime relationship because we want to enhance the overall lifetime value of that customer. And last but not least is a great tool as you've worked with already has been the purchase driver scorecard, which I was amazed was not brought back into question five when we looked at how the financial metrics, because you look at the driver of what you could have done converting, and then you could have driven it straight into the income statement. And for those who may have been exposed to NPV analysis or IRR, you could have then turned it around and said, this is what the net present value would be. It's a positive. It's a great investment. Let's go forward. In quoting Tom Peters, I'll close you out here, is what get measured, get done. And this is something that Colgate-Palmolive should have been doing as well. Okay, everybody, have a great Saturday evening, and I'll see you on Monday.